Hey guys, what's happening today? Uh, Rebzev once again, roaming around, pondering, talking, listening, thinking about um, idolatry and how sometimes we're very tough on idolatry, you know, because Hashem, of course, He tells us to be tough on idolatry. And uh, with good reason. And yet I'm struck by the fact that I know I'm still struggling with things deep inside of me that need to be rooted out that are considered idolatries. Um, and I'm struck by the fact that there are people all over the world who, uh, you know, practice what what we might call classical idolatry, you know, so they have a, a statue in their home or in their temple or wherever it is, and they might dress up the statue and they might uh, even put out offerings for the statue. And, uh, you know, because they want uh, whatever spirit to inhabit the statue, just like in in the beginning when when idolatry was real very real it's still very real i should say but you know classical idolatry was was prevalent you know the idols could move and speak uh the, you know the rabbi said that this was was the case and uh you know we're all struggling with it on different levels and we're all very critical of people who practice classical idolatry I wonder if we should be a little kinder to them and maybe of course we should be kinder to ourselves because you know we're all struggling with it I'm struggling with it I'm asking Hashem for help and I believe Hashem is helping me he's exposing things in me that need to be dealt with he's also exposing the greatest fear of just having everything stripped away, and then it's just Hashem and I. And what's the reason for idolatry? Because it's very frightening for humanity to be faced with only just Hashem. Even those of us who say, oh, I want to know Hashem, and I want this, and I want that. Please, Hashem, I want to know, I want to know. It's scary, guys. That's the reason that, you know, when... When uh, the Torah is given at Sinai and when there are voices and thunderings, you know, that we said, hey, man, Moses, can you come and, you know, go speak for us, please, because we can't handle it. And if we really look at any form of idolatry that we have or that other people practice, it's the same reason we're afraid. It's fear. And even if it's emotional idolatry, you know, if we're using our emotions to hide behind from Hashem, we're afraid. If we're, uh, if we're part of another religion and we're setting up uh, an idol, we're afraid, actually. And also, it's the only way we can relate, really. I mean... When you think about all the attributes of Hashem, it's very hard to conceptualize, really, that one God can do everything. So it's easier to say, I'm going to have little mini-gods to do things for me, or help me with a particular area. But I think deep down, some of the people who even, we might say, oh, they practice idolatry, they will might tell you, no, I only believe in one God, it's just that this particular statue represents this aspect of God. And I'm not necessarily defending people who do this. What I'm saying is that we all do it and we need to be kind to ourselves. And if we ever encounter people or read about people, I read a story about it. That's why I'm talking to you about it. If we if we encounter people who do this, uh we need to find a way for kindness. If, if, if our heart wants to fight or do something, we need to find a way. Ask Hashem, help us for kindness. Because in a way, what some people do may not be any different than, than me putting a picture in my sukkah. Or 
I saw a man on TV on the news who, uh, yes, I have a TV, so hopefully you're not going to stone me for that. But I saw a man on the news who had never met his birth mom. And um, he he's like 95 years old, something like this. And he found out who his birth mom was. She died like right after he was born. She died before she was 19. And um, he got a picture of her. He, he found all the history and he found it through his daughter actually. And he got a picture of her. And now he puts the picture on, on his uh, dresser, uh, the place where he puts his clothing, and he talks to her every day. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know? And it really touched me. And I thought about how he's going to talk to a pitch, picture, some people are going to talk to a statue. And why? Because we're searching, we're longing for something. And it's really too scary to think about, oh, it's just me and Hashem. It's just Zev and Hashem. So, I don't know. I think I just want to say, uh, when we have those opportunities, ask Hashem to help us work on that aspect. When we, when we find things are breaking down and we need help, ask Hashem for help. And then to, if you encounter people who actually,